Welcome back, fourth grade. This is Math Lesson 108. Let's pray and we're going to get right into it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you, God, for giving us minds that can learn and do hard things. God, as we explore some new concepts today in math, help us to remember that doing hard things teaches us that we can do hard things. God, be with us over these next few minutes as we learn. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Are you worried? Are you listening to what I just prayed? Did you hear me say we're going to do something hard today? You are right. This is going to be a bit on the challenging side, but let's rejoice in knowing that God gave us amazing brains and minds to understand and to learn new things. I don't want you to be afraid of doing hard things and doing new things. We're going to talk about two new concepts today, but both of them are going to look a bit familiar to you. You're probably going to think at some point, Hey, I feel like we've talked about this a little bit before, and you are right, we have. The first thing written on our board is the word formula. If you were right here in the classroom with me, I would have written this in purple, and you would have your notes out right now writing this down. But you can rejoice in being home today because you don't have to do that. If you want to pause the video and write them in your notes, you are welcome to do that. But you certainly do not have to. Our first definition today is the word formula. A formula is a rule, a fact, or a relationship expressed by an equation. But I want you to stop and think about the word formula in a different way. How many of you like to cook with your mom, or your dad, or your grandparents, or your siblings? I know Olivia and I love to cook together. Honestly, I love to cook with all of my children and my husband. We like getting in the kitchen and creating things together. Can you think of what thing in the kitchen that we might use that could be considered a formula? If you're thinking of a recipe, that's exactly the same thing that I was thinking of. Think about that. A rule, a factor, a relationship expressed by an equation. A recipe kind of gives you some rules for how to manipulate all the different pieces and parts of a recipe and tells you how to cook something. So I want you to think about a formula is just instructions on how to create something, how to manipulate some numbers. All right. Let's, um, let's move on. Our next definition today is the distributive property, and we're going to talk about it as it relates to multiplication today. It does also um, apply to other operations, but today we're just going to talk about multiplication. So um, let's look at this definition. It says a number times the sum of two add-ins is equal. Oh, I misread. I wrote the, the instead of to the to the sum of that same number times each add-end. And I had to abbreviate the word add-end here. I ran out of space and didn't want to come down to the next line. And so what this simply means is um, when you have a set of parentheses, for example, two times four plus two, we know from our order of operations, please, my dear Aunt Sally, that we do P, please, parentheses first. So if you add 4 plus 2, what does 4 plus 2 equal, everyone? You're right, it equals 6. So if you said 2 times 6, we would find the answer, which is 12. But what the distributive property says is, when you are multiplying and you have addition, you actually don't have to add first. You could just multiply. 2 times 4 equals 8. And 2 times 2, so we multiply times the 2, now we're at 4, now times the 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 8 plus 4 equals 12. We came up with 12 both times. What the distributive property says is you can do it either way. You're going to come up with the same answer. The multiplication is distributed throughout the equation. That's what that means. All right. Are you wondering why we have these two interesting concepts at the same time in the same lesson? Well, I'm about to tell you why. If you are going to write this definition in your notes, go ahead and pause the video and do that now because I'm about to erase it. All right, my friends, let's find out why we're talking about formulas and why we're talking about the distributive property. We want to talk about some shapes today. And I want to talk about two different aspects of shapes, perimeter and area. So the two shapes we're going to talk about today are rectangles and triangles. We have already 
already talked about how to find the perimeter of both of these shapes. We know that all we have to do to find a perimeter is to add all of the sides. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We know that. But there are ways to write a formula that can help us to find perimeter and a formula that can also help us to find area. We know how to find the area of this guy. Length times width but we have not yet talked about how to find the area of this guy. And you're gonna have a formula for that today. So let's talk about some formulas. To find the area of a rectangle, we multiply two of the sides. And it's important that they are two adjacent sides, sides that are touching. It can't be the sides that are across from each other. That would not give you the correct number. To find the area of a rectangle, we're going to multiply the length times the width. And the formula I'm giving you today is L for length times W for width. L for length, W for width. So if this rectangle was two by four, the area would be four times two, which equals eight. If it were five and two, we'd have five times two equals ten. If the sides were six and three, we would multiply six times three equals eighteen. We've done this before. That's nothing new, but I don't think we've seen it written out this way as a formula, a recipe for how to find the area. Let's talk now how we can about how to find the area for this guy. We need some new information. We're going to use some new terms. The, to find the area of a triangle, the formula is base, and we're going to put a B for base, times H. That stands for height. This the tallest point of your triangle to the base in a perpendicular line to the base is called the height. So this is the base. This guy right here is the height. And then we're going to divide by two. So this formula is brand new to us. This one really not that challenging. We already knew that you multiplied the two sides. This one's a little trickier. <laughs> We've not seen this one before. Base times height divided by two. Because remember, we can use this as a fraction bar, but it also means divided by. So let's plug in some numbers here. If the base is four and the height is two, Base times height, 4 times 2 equals 8, divided by 2 equals, yes, it is 4. How about if we plugged in, instead of the base being 4 and the height being 2, let's make it, let's make our base 10 and our height 3. Wow, that's getting more challenging. Base 10 times height 3. 10 times 3 equals 30 divided by 2. 30 divided by 2 equals 15. All right, nice job, everybody. Now let's see where distributive property comes into our lesson today. We're going to talk about the perimeter of this guy, of the rectangle. To find the perimeter, there are two different ways we can write this equation. Perimeter, we're adding all of the sides. We know this is a three, we know this is a six here. So we have two lengths plus two widths. Because we're gonna add six plus six, that's the two lengths and three plus three, that's the two widths. Or you can say 
perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus the width. You can say 3 plus 3 is 6, 12, 6 plus 6 is 12, 6 plus 12 equals 18, and that would be your perimeter. The distributive property tells us that both of these equations are going to give us the same answer. It does not matter how you um, manipulate these numbers in this particular instance, they will come out to the same number. Let's give it a try. Two times length, the length is six. So that would be two times six is 12, plus two times the width. Two times three is six, 12 plus six equals 18. Now let's try this. Length plus width, three plus, I'm sorry, six plus three, equals nine, two times nine equals 18. Did I come up with the right answer? The same answer? I did. Or I can say two times the length is 12, plus two times the width is six, and I still would have come up with 18. The distributive property tells us that it doesn't matter if you multiply first or add first, you will still come up with the same answer. Mind blown just a little bit? Probably. Let's go ahead and look in your book and work through a few examples. Let's look at the practice set. If you are struggling with this lesson, I would encourage you at this point to pause the video, read the lesson in the book. It is not exactly word for word what I just did on the board, but it is all the same ideas, just worded a tiny bit differently. Sometimes we need to hear something said a little bit differently in order to understand it better. If you are struggling right now and you are looking at this and thinking, I have no earthly idea what Mrs. Cushing is saying, pause the video, read the book. I'm not gonna sit here on video and read word for word out of the book to you. That's kind of a waste of your time. I want you to read it and make sure that you understand it. Then you could even watch the video again after you've read it. Then come back, unpause, and let's look at the lesson practice. All right, I'm in our practice set. Practice problem A says, use the distributive property to multiply. And we have six times 10 plus six. All right, let's do that together. Get all of this cleared up, and your practice set is six times 10 plus six. The distributive property tells us that you can add first or multiply first, it doesn't matter. So in order to show that that is true, you need to show me both ways. 10 plus six equals, everyone, 16. So now we're going to multiply 16 times 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. 6 times 1 equals 6, plus 3 equals 9. Now let's try it the other way. 6 times 10 equals 60. 6 times 6 equals 36. 60 plus 36 equals 96. Did we come up with the same answer? Yes, we did. That means the distributive property works. All right, look at B. Use the formula. Perimeter equals two times length plus width to find the perimeter of a rectangle that is 15 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. So we know that the width is 10 and the length is, oh, what was the length? It was 15. All right, and our unit of measurement is centimeters. And we're gonna use the formula, perimeter equals two times length plus width. So we're going to say perimeter equals two times, what's the length, everyone? 15. What's the width? 10. All right. Let's multiply. Two times 15 equals 30. Two times 10 equals 20. 30 plus 20 equals 50. 50 
centimeters is our answer. Now let's look at C. Use the formula for area of a square. Let's think about that. A square is a specific kind of rectangle. Length times width, it's the same on a square. Length and width on a square are both just called sides. So the area of a square would be found by multiplying side times side. An easier way to note that is that the area of a square is side squared. Side squared. So if we have a square whose side is 20 feet, wow that's a long side, 20 feet. To find the area of a square you're going to write 20 squared. That means 20 times 20. Let's multiply 20 times 20. This is a great time to use your hanging zero. 2 times 0, 2 times 2, 400 square feet. All right, my friends, I know this was a bit of a challenging lesson today. I am so proud of you for sticking through to the end. You have 30 problems now to do. Remember, you can go back and look at the lesson again. You can read through it in your book. You can even have your parents call me if you need a little bit of help. I know that you can do this. I believe in you. Remember, doing hard things teaches us what, my friends? That we can do hard things. Have a great day. I hope to see you soon.